let's see, in 2025, I think people's interest in the pharmaceutical industry and in trusting the pharmaceutical industry is very poor. And that's understandable considering what we've been through in the last few years. But keep in mind, if you get hormone replacement therapy because you have low testosterone, are there side effects to that? Well, All right, my name is John Jaquish, and today I'm going to talk about the logic of pharmaceuticals. Uh, most specifically, what are the differences between hormones, peptides, and pharmaceuticals that don't fit into those categories? So I'm a doctor of biomedical engineering. I re basically read research for a living. I've written a couple of books. And I think this summary of definitions, let's call it definitions, is really gonna help you make decisions as to what you might wanna consider versus not consider. Hormones and peptides occur naturally in the body. Pharmaceuticals that do not fit in the hormone or peptide category typically are chemicals that are not found in nature. And from a business perspective, pharmaceutical companies, like the priority is a patent. So they wanna get a patent on a drug so that they can market it and nobody else can copy it. And there are very aggressive margins on pharmaceuticals because of these patents. Sometimes they're in the thousands of percent markup from you know development of the drug and, and and putting it out in the marketplace you know i mean i'm not going to discuss the, the logic of that i think some of it is tragic because sometimes pharmaceutical companies will develop something that is beneficial for a very small population so to recover the money that they invested or at least that's their story they end up charging thousands and thousands of dollars per year or per month for the medication for people who are absolutely desperate for it, but I don't want to focus on their business model because that that's a multi-hour lecture and we're going to let RFK handle that. What I want to focus on is the fact that you get no benefit specifically when you help a pharmaceutical company make a ton of money. It doesn't mean you get better care. It just means you paid more. So like, for example, there are recommendations that frequently physicians make, prescriptions physicians write for newer drugs that have patent protection. Uh, I, I mean, I have allergies, so I've been on all sorts of prescribed drugs for allergies. I'm not on any anymore. This was in the past, like since I went primarily uh, animal protein based, all my allergies went away. But when I was taking histamine blockers, it was crazy how every time there was a new one, I had a doctor who told me, oh, you need to take this new one, you need to take this new one. Yet, whenever I would be with one of my fraternity brothers and somebody would have an allergic reaction and we'd take them to the emergency room, what do you think they gave that person? They gave him Benadryl, which the patent expired on a long time ago. So why'd they give him Benadryl as opposed to the newer drugs that have fresh patents on that clearly there's a financial incentive. Well, at some point, the medical professionals just want to make you better. And Benadryl works. And those other things, they don't work as well as Benadryl. So the, the push is to make something that you can get a patent on, not the absolute best care. And it's just an example. And there's other examples the other way where new pharmaceuticals are better than the old things. But I'm just saying that what you're being told may not be the full story. Now, I see people who are very apprehensive about taking, most, mostly since, let's see, in 2025, I think people's interest in the pharmaceutical industry and in trusting the pharmaceutical industry is very poor. And that's understandable considering what we've been through in the last few years. But 
keep in mind if you get hormone replacement therapy because you have low testosterone, are there side effects to that? Well, yes and no. There are ways to avoid the side effects as a new type of testosterone coming out that I'm going to be talking about. It's a fast acting testosterone and there are no side effects to that. Uh, it turns out that the side effects really have to do with timing. So like if you could use testosterone and not suppress your own natural testosterone, would you do it? Even if basically every day after it gets out of your system, runs out, of your, it runs its course, there are no negative implications. I mean, if, you need, if you're low in testosterone, why wouldn't you do it? And I, I've said this before, there are no rewards for white knuckling it through life, which leads me to peptides. There are some peptides that I really like, and I think in certain circumstances are very beneficial. Like for example, BPC-157. If you have an injury, you will increase your rate of recovery. They haven't been able to find in, in all the clinical trials of this particular peptide, nobody's found any negative side effects. When we look at GLP agonist peptides, well, if there's a medical need, if somebody's morbidly obese, why don't we fix that first? And also, when somebody is taking a GLP agonist drug, they lose their appetite, which is really the source of their problem. So if they use the peptide to build better habits, then when they go off, they have better habits as long as they stick to those habits. That, that is pretty key to the issue, but it breaks the cycle of constantly being addicted to food, which is why I support these things. I think under the right circumstances, for somebody who really has trouble with their food addiction, uh, you know, and, and at the same time, I do not blame anybody who puts a nicotine patch in their mouth to try and get over smoking. I also don't blame people who put a nicotine patch in their mouth so they can just have greater brain activity because nicotine in the absence of putting burning material in your lungs, it's a cognitive enhancement. So things to keep in mind. And I think if you keep the perspective of hormones, peptides, and then drugs not found in nature, keep those very separate. And I think you'll be healthier and happier long-term. If this video helped you, I want you to subscribe and follow. I'm gonna put out videos on a regular basis. I think they're gonna help a whole lot of people, especially if you're one of those people that doesn't just instantly grow from lifting regular weights. We've got the answer for you.